Jenny, I'm curious to know how Maddie's peace work is still continuing to work through you and your efforts today. Can you share an anecdote with us um, on how this is happening? One of the teens that I started working with through 3 Dot Dash, his name is Musa Musawi. Uh, Musa lived in Iraq until March of 2003. When the United States bombed Baghdad, Musa had to flee his home with his family and seek shelter in Jordan. Musa has spina bifida. He's in a wheelchair. Um, he had to leave many, many things behind. Musa could have turned into an angry teenager, but like Maddie, Musa said, this is not how we should be living. So he started, he, he was worried about the people who didn't leave Baghdad, and he was worried that in Baghdad there was no clean water, there's no soap, there's no health supplies. So as a 14-year-old, 13, 14-year-old kid, he starts his own foundation where he gets together medical supplies, band-aids, antiseptic, bandages, um, you know, stethoscopes, just things that you can, you know, keep people from dying from a simple cut. And he starts getting those across the border from Jordan to Iraq. He was one of the teams that was selected to come to our inaugural peace summit, the Just Peace Summit in 2008. And at the end of the week, Musa's now learned all about Maddie. You know, he calls him my kin brother. Moose is a great rapper, so he did this great rap about his kin brother, Maddie, in America. Um, but towards the end of the week, we're in New York City, so we took all of these teens from Kenya and Bangladesh and Iraq and Canada and Colombia. We take them to the World Trade Center site. So we have these 30 teens going through the memorial, and Musa and I happen to be going through one exhibit at the same time, and I pointed to one of the photos that was in the exhibit. And I said, that's Maddie's and my friend Tommy. And I said, I'm sure we'll find some of our other friends in here too. But there was Tommy's picture. And Tommy, you read this in the messenger book, was this firefighter who handed Maddie the trophy that he had won in a fundraising softball tournament on September 10th, 2001. And he said, you're a champion. You didn't run the bases, but you play the game of life. Yes. And the very next day, Tommy dies. Musa and I sat there crying together, not just for Tommy, but there's a Muslim teenager and a Christian woman, hand in hand, tear in tear, crying for the unnecessary loss of life, not just on September 11, 2001, but that we know is going to continue to happen in the future if people don't start making peace their choice. Musa's is one of the teens that came to the Peace Park that was then honored this year, September 7th, this year, 2010, by Senator Hillary Clinton. And as I sat in the Peace Park, he stopped here to, to visit Maddie's statue, visit the Peace Garden for the first time before, before heading down to D.C. to receive his award as a Muslim teen doing good work in the Mideast. I'm hugging Musa goodbye, and that's when my cell phone went doo doo doo, -doo for, you know, breaking news alert. And I glanced at it, and there is a Christian minister in Florida that is breaking news because he wants to burn a Koran. And I am hugging my Muslim son from Iraq who had to run from his home and yet chose to come to the United States of America to hear and learn about peace from a little American teen and to take that back to his country. Today, Musa continues his work. He's moved back to Iraq. He's now bringing wheelchairs and medical supplies to people in Iraq who are forsaken by their families due to cognitive disabilities, due to severe physical disabilities. Musa will not give up. And he is inspired, he says, by my brother Matty. We, we cannot give in. We can't choose everything in our life, but we can choose how we reflect the tragedy and the triumph of our life into the future. That's Musa Musawi. Well, Jenny, thank you for this time. I appreciate um, your being available for me. I thank you very much for your time, for, for doing this.